Okay, welcome back. It is episode two of this little series on fly lines for still waters. Now, I hope you enjoyed episode one. If you haven't seen it yet, definitely go check it out. It's all about floating lines for still waters. Now, this episode is going to be helping you on sinking lines for still water fly fishing. And it's going to help you kind of decipher what lines are going to be best to have in your repertoire for really maximizing your equipment. As I've mentioned already, having the right equipment, especially in still water fly fishing is so, so, so vital. I really, really hope that this episode is valuable to you. Okay, so welcome back to episode two of two on this little series on fly lines for still waters. Now, of course, in the first one, we covered floating lines, and in this one, we're going to be talking sinking lines. So it's really important to understand how these sinking lines work and, and exactly why we're gonna be using them in different scenarios, fishing different bugs, different imitations, uh, and different parts of the water column. So it might be a bit overkill. I do carry a ton of different sinking lines with me at any given time on the water. So I just hope that this episode sheds some light on exactly what those lines are used for. Again, if you missed episode one, highly suggest going back to watch it. But one thing that I want you to know is that this is not paid content in any way. Nobody's paying me to tell you uh, nobody's paying me to tell you what lines I use. I'm very fortunate to work with scientific anglers as part of their pro staff team, but it's not, uh, nobody's sponsoring this episode. I just want to, uh, I just want this to be something that, you know, helps things make a little bit more sense for you when it comes to sinking lines uh, for fishing on lakes because the options are literally endless. Doesn't mean that what I use or my opinion is better than, than you know, anybody else's. This is just what has worked best for me. Okay, so the first one that I'm gonna fish a lot is called a hover line. Okay, so the hover line is, it's got kind of a, it's got a, kind of an interesting makeup to it. Sinks very, very slow. This is a line that, that is not designed for really fishing anywhere other than, uh, it's just not, not fishing anywhere other than the scenarios that are gonna call for a very slow, very gradual sink. Uh, this is not one that you're gonna be using to fish dragonfly nymphs in, 30 feet of water unless they're eating them on the surface, which uh, is pretty unlikely. So I'll use this hover line quite a bit. There's a couple applications. There's, a, there's, there's one reason that I really, really like this. So where I'll use this line the most, okay, is fishing uh, shrimp and mayfly nymphs in very shallow water. Very shallow being usually four to seven feet deep. Okay, uh, now maybe we'll call it four to 10 feet deep. but. The reason that I like this over a floating line, you might just say, well, why don't you use a floating line? Is that when you're fishing, especially to spooky fish, is that this line does not create a wake, okay? So that can be a, that can be a pretty critical factor if you're fishing really clear lake, really clear water, and you're moving the fly, even if you're hand twisting it, you're still creating a wake, you're still sending out that, you know, that vibration, creating a bit of a disturbance uh, in the water surface, in the surface film. The nice thing about this hover line is it sits right in that film, sits right underneath it, okay? So what that's gonna do, it's gonna eliminate the wake, it's gonna allow me still to fish super, super slow as we are with a lot of times with, you know, calabatus nymphs, so on and so forth. I can fish them very slow and not create that wake, but also not worry about the line sinking too fast and hanging up on the bottom, okay? So that's really where I'm fishing this hover line the most. That's where I think that it is, uh, is just an absolute killer. Uh, any line that you can find in kind of that half inch to one inch per second, it's a really, really nice, uh, it's a really, really nice line to fish in those applications. The other time I'll use it sometimes is uh, deeper water fishing chronomids, and I'll actually use it, uh, I'll go over this again uh, on the next line, but sometimes I'll use it to really, really slowly kind of sweep through the whole water column. Uh, it again, allows me to fish the fly very slow without worrying too much about uh, without worrying too much about hanging up on bottom. Okay, the reason that I'll use this with say shrimp sometimes is that uh, let's say I don't wanna fish them under a strike indicator, maybe there's too much wave action. Nice thing about this, it punches right underneath that wave action, doesn't affect, uh, doesn't make that fly move in an unnatural manner in any way, shape or form. Again, if you need the fly to get down quickly, this is not really the line to use it for, but it does have you know great application. Uh, the leader setup that I'm going to use with this oftentimes is like a seven and a half to a nine to a 12. So kind of in that, you know, typically in that nine to 12 foot range. Um, I don't want it too long. I don't want the fly getting down or the, or the line getting down, sorry, and the fly still hanging up in the water column. I want the fly to be fishing pretty, 
you know, pretty level with, uh, with the fly line. So anyways, that's a hover line. I use it, you know, I use it quite a bit in really, really shallow water. I'll use it for leeches too in very shallow water. Again, does not create the wake, does not create any disturbance. Super, super nice. Okay. Now the second one that I'll use a ton, uh, this is the, uh, still water, the clear camo. I fish this line all the time. I absolutely love it. So what you see is every few feet, basically this line is, uh, Every few feet, this line is changing color. You're gonna see some yellow, some clear, and some brown in there. Uh, it's nice, it's a monocore line. Now, monocore lines, if anybody remembers, like the old, old Cortland lines when they first came out, uh, the slime line, it was the bomb because it was a clear line. The only thing was the memory issues were quite bad with these lines for a long time. Uh, it's really nice, you know, they're, they're very supple, very fishable now. Uh, I will use this line in many instances fishing less than 10 feet of water. I'll use it for leeches, use it for shrimp, uh, use it for water boatmen. There's a ton of different applications for it. Uh, another time that I'll use it again is fishing deeper water with chronomids and I'll actually use it fishing chronomid pupa when I don't really know where fish are suspending themselves in the water column. Could be say you're fishing 20 feet of water and they're all over there a foot off the bottom, they're three feet off the bottom, they're six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve 10, 12 feet off the bottom. It's nice because it's gonna hit, it's gonna bring the fly down through the column and it's gonna actually sweep the whole entire thing. Okay, so it really is, is I think, more effective a way uh, to fish chronomids than with the indicator if you don't know where they're situated. Okay, again, I'll use a floating line for that often too, which is a no, whole other episode for another time. Uh, I'll have more information on where you can learn a ton more about this at the end of this episode. So definitely, 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 if you're interested in lake fishing, stick around because I think you're gonna love it. Okay, uh, next one that I'll use quite a bit is, this is like my, this is like my workhorse. Probably fish this more than any other sinking line. And, uh, and that's a seamless density sink one, sink three. So it's a sink one in the back end, sink three in the front, in the head. So that's one inch per second in the back. And, uh, and three inches per second in the front portion of the line that you're fishing quite a bit. So nice thing about this is that you're not getting a belly in the fly line, so you get a very, very direct connection to the fly. Uh, it's easy, you know, fish are kind of soft mouthing the fly. They're gonna pick it up and you're immediately gonna feel it through the fly line. There's not, they're not gonna be pulling up on any slack. Okay, so I will use this line. This is my favorite shrimping line. This is like, this line is like the shrimping machine. I'll use this in, I would say typically six to 12 feet of water, a lot in that six to 10 feet of water. Um, I'll, I'll just fish this line a lot. I fish it with dragonfly nymph sometimes. I'll fish it with water boatmen, fish it with shrimp, uh, fish it with blobs quite a bit, you know, zooplankton uh, or mops or, or, or watsits or any of those weird UK attractor flies that we fish so often here sometimes. Um, but it is a really, really nice line. I like that three inch per second. This is kind of what they would refer to as a medium sink. Uh, it's a very, very versatile line. Again, I'll fish this for leeches, with leeches quite a bit too, but you know, shrimping, I'm a huge fan of fishing shrimp, uh, you know, gamorous shrimp. In lakes that have a good population of them, they make up such a huge part of a fish's diet because it's so easy for them to revert back to eating them whenever they want. Okay, so the next one is, uh, is a sink three, sink five. And again, this, this line is a big time workhorse as well. I'll fish this, you know, there's not a lot of different uh, sinking line scenarios that you can't fish this line in. I'll fish it more in that, I would say eight to 15 feet. Uh, that's kind of the sweet spot. I mean, that's where we do a lot of our fishing anyways. Even 10 to 15, down to 20 feet, you know, you can fish this line for sure, but sink three in the back, sink five in the front, seamless density, really, really nice line. I'll fish this a ton with boobies, blobs, uh, dragonfly nymphs. Um, I'll fish this with caddis pupa in deeper water for sure. Uh, water boatmen. This is just, it's, it's a great all around line. Not really ideal for fishing in the shallows unless you're using a floating fly. Uh, it's going to hang up a little bit too quickly. It's going to sink a little bit too fast, but you know, that three leading into the five inch per second, super, super nice. Uh, there's a ton of different applications for this. There's not a whole lot of scenarios in that 10 to 20 foot water, that, that 10 to 15 foot water, especially that, that this line's not going to work for it. Okay, so a uh, second last one that I use a lot, and, and this is a line that comes in pretty handy uh, pretty often, 
and I definitely don't use it as much as I will use the uh, the <clears throat> the sync three sync five, but this is a sync five to seven. Okay, so five inches per second in the back, seven inches per second in the front. Uh, this line sinks like an absolute rock. It uh, can feel like you're just heaving a chunk of lead sometimes uh, at the at the end of your fly line but it's super nice, gets down really quick. And really the applications that I'll use this for are dangling with chronomids. So fishing the vertical, either the larva or the pupa, uh, dangling chronomids close to bottom in deep water. I love because this line gets down so quickly. Uh, I'll use this for fishing boobies and I'll use this for fishing blobs in deeper water. I love this line for crawling dragonfly nymphs, especially floating dragonfly nymphs, okay? So the reason why this works so well is because you can fish a really short leader. So let's say a, a two and a half to a four, maybe five foot leader, but no longer than that. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna crawl that fly through the mud or through the weeds and that floating fly, oftentimes, you know, deer hair dragon or foam dragon, they're gonna float, you know, right, right up above that, that bottom structure. And it's a great line for that. I'll use it in deep water quite a bit. Uh, and then I'll use it for fishing boobies in either shallow or deep water. Again, fishing the booby, a lot of time you want that because it's such a, such a buoyant fly. Short leader, fish the line on the bottom and fish the fly just off of it. Uh, it's, a, it's a spectacular line. I mean, it fishes, it sinks so incredibly fast. Uh, but it is, you know, it's a great fly, for, uh, great fly line for deep water and, and also works very well in shallow water if you're fishing a floating fly. Not gonna work too well in shallow water if you're, if you're not fishing a floating fly. Uh, okay, and the last one I'll fish quite a bit is called a parabolic sink. Um, now, when I say I fish it quite a bit, that's actually not true. I don't fish it that often, but when I do, it's, uh, it's, it's really quite nice. Um, the, the times that I'll fish this the most, first I'm gonna tell you what it is. Okay, parabolic sink is a sink three to a sink five in the belly back to a sink three. Now, you might think, why on earth would you ever want your line to belly? Well, there's times when uh, there's times when you this is actually really really applicable for me now in BC I'm not allowed to use you know three fly washing line setups or anything, but I can uh, Fish this for water boatmen or back swimmers when you want when you look at the way that a water boatman hits the water And they start diving down. Okay I want that heavier part in the belly of the line to actually pull the fly down through the water column It's uh, again, it's not all the time that you need this but it's really, really nice when you do to have the option to have a line that's actually gonna pull the fly down through the water column. That's exactly what those boatmen are doing. Uh, I'll also use this fishing floating dragons quite a bit, but, uh, but really this is like a boatman line for me and I love fishing it in that application. Of course, some you know European techniques or some multi-fly rigs, I don't get to fish those very often unless I'm fishing outside of my home province. So this is kind of where I use this uh, this is kind of where I use this line the most. So again, just to recap, we did the hover, the clear camo, the sink one to three, the three to five, five to seven, and the parabolic sink. Uh, these are all lines that I use all the time. I get a ton of questions about fly lines, especially fly lines for lake fishing. So if you're going to make a purchase, you know, I can't say that one of these is going to do all the work for you, but I hope that this episode kind of sheds a little bit of light on uh, on, on what these different lines are used for and some of the ter terminology that's used. Again, when you're reading a fly line box and it says IPS, that always means inches per second, okay? Uh, and the S, when I say S1 or S3, that, that means sink one or sink three. So sink one would be sink at one inch per second. Hope that that makes sense. And if you have not yet, I would love to invite you to grab a free copy of my book, Seven Steps of Fly Fishing Success. Talk big time about the importance. The first chapter is all about letting your equipment work for you and not against you. This is where so many anglers miss the mark. And I really, really hope that if you were able to watch these last two episodes or listen to these last two episodes, they were very, very valuable to you. So if you've made it this far, it means that you enjoy still water fly fishing on some level. Now I'm gonna tell you, things got pretty weird for me when I flew home from California at the end of February last year. And I had heard about this virus that had just kind of started going through the area that I had just left. I was down there at a trade show doing some presentations and promoting my offline guiding business. We were booking trips, everything was fine. And then, as most of you know, uh, 
things started to progress pretty quickly. I went to another trade show at the start of March. I was booking some trips and then it wasn't 10 days later, the whole province shut down. We were quarantined, everything, and my life just turned upside down. It was a very challenging time for me, uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, everything. It was just, it was just, you know, very, very weird, very new for me. One thing that I started to think about was my business. And I called my friend Phil Rowley, who I'm very, very lucky to work alongside. And I called him and I said, hey, Phil, I said, I said, what are you going to do? And he was like, well, I don't really know because, uh, you know, his, his main thing was traveling around and doing presentations to, to fly fishing clubs. He said, what are you going to do? I said, I said, I don't, I don't really know. I said, but we got to figure something out. You know, I've got two kids, mortgage vehicles. I wasn't just about to watch everything crumble under my feet. So we got together on the phone and, and we decided, well, do you think that we could start teaching people on the internet? I had launched uh, an online fly tying course that had gone okay. I didn't know how to market it, but, uh, but I, had, I had shot it and people were interested. And I said, I said, I think there's a market for people wanting to learn online. It was amazing the way that things just seemed to rapidly progress from there. Had one of the best years I've had my entire life. One of the best business years I've ever had and just totally watched my whole entire life transform. Obviously, you know, we stopped booking our, our offline, our guiding trips. Uh, that was a tough thing for me, but it was nice to be able to adjust quickly. So at the end of 2020, Phil and I decided, you know what, we've got to decide, we've got to take all of our best content and put it onto a really, really sound, really great learning platform, educational platform for people that are interested in still water fly fishing. So I'm very, very excited to let you know about the Stillwater Fly Fishing Academy. And I can't tell you a whole lot about it right now, but what I can tell you is that I'll leave you a link below. If you go to stillwaterflyfishingacademy.com, you can drop your name and email and we are going to let you know as soon, as soon, as soon, as soon as we can. Some further details. Sometime in February, our course is going to be launching and we're going to have all of our best courses and workshops piled into one place, plus a ton of free resources for still water enthusiasts. So, you know, we're both very, very excited about this and I couldn't be just more grateful to have had this transitionary period this year. It's the reason why I'm sitting here talking to you in my, in this little home studio, uh, into the camera. This has changed my life in so many ways, but it's been amazing to be able to reach a greater scope and educate a greater number of anglers by using the internet. So we're so excited about this. I'm so excited about this. You can go to stillwaterflyfishingacademy.com for all the details and I look forward to sharing more about this in the near future.